Today I'm going to make a game loop for my board game and I did a video for dice, how to roll dice. So I'm going to use this world. You can use a fresh world, it'll be fine, but I want to have I want to eventually implement my dice. So I'll put this link in the description right here and you just click on it, come to these three dots, hit edit, and then you'll get your own world. And here we go. So I have my button that I hit, I would roll, and then that would roll the dice. So this is going to be the game I'm focusing on right here. I'm going to make it a Monopoly game. I'm not going to use this button, though. I just used it for demonstration purposes. So I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to make it invisible for now. There we go. And if you have a fresh world, don't worry about that. Just put a big part here, kind of so that you can have an idea of where your board's going to be. Let's go to Model and make a makeshift... Um, lobby there we go put some spawn points down you can make a nice lobby if you want but just for the sake of this video here i'll make a simple lobby and players are going to come in here and then when the game starts they'll be they'll be teleported to the board and we'll put spaces around there uh where they're going to be facing the board all right but for now just to make it simple i'm just going to move these here and turn collisions off so i can Duplicate in place, control D, control D, control D, control D. And ideally you'd you'd want them you'd want them spaced better, like one on each side or something. But this will work for now. I'm gonna hit this part here, hit the bottom part, I'm gonna group them together. And I'm gonna call these game spawns. And I'm gonna get my spawn locations for my lobby. I'm gonna group those. Those will be lobby spawns. All right, now let's go down to server script service and add a regular script. And this is gonna be my, my uh, game manager. Let's see, game manager. And that's tiny, so let's make it a little bigger. I'll get rid of this for now so we have more screen real estate for our code and make three variables so players needed and i'll say one for now or i'm going to make it like three and then number of players zero that's how many number that's how many players are in the game on your server there so they'll be eligible to play and then i'm going to do something for session data I'm going to make a table that's going to store data for each player. So as far as functions, I'm going to make a function for is enough players. Oh, there we go. And I'll make another one. Local function intermission. And let me make another one here. Local function check for winner and I'll do a function for check if anyone is playing because we're gonna not allow new people to start playing until the game is finished unless you want to put multiple um, multiple boards but I, that that would be a very long video so I'll do local function uh, prepare players and this is where we're going to do our teleporting. And then I'll do local function play game. Move that up a little bit. And the play the play game is going to be like the in-house monopoly game. And then we're going to have a bigger loop that's more encompassing. I'm going to call that the game loop. So I'll say local function game loop. And that's going to check to see if games players are in the game uh if there's a new game being started it's going to it's going to initiate new games and stuff too let's go ahead and do a stub function for that with a little bit of code so we'll do while true do this is going to play for as long as the server is running uh, we'll put stuff in there later yeah, let's see what else now we just need our regular uh kind of our bookkeeping stuff for when players enter the world and stuff Let's do, oh, let's spawn the game loop in its own thread so it doesn't top our script. And then we'll say a local function add char 
So if a character is added, there we go. And we'll do local function add player. So the player joins the game. And local function remove player. So if somebody leaves, we're going to have to keep track of that. Now we're going to get our players, player added event, connect that to add player. And we'll do our game players player removing, connect that to remove player. All right, so in player added, I am going to set up some of my uh, session data. And we'll add to this, but for now, session data for each player, we are going to initialize that, eh, whoops, bracket, there we go, square bracket. We're going to initialize that to curly bracket is playing flag will be false when they start and the wins will be zero when they start. We're not going to do a data store on this one, uh, not yet anyway. And then we're going to say number of players will equal the number of players plus one. And then we're going to get our player character added and connect that to add char. Because somebody's going to die and then jump off the side or reset their character. And then we want to exclude them from the game because we may not want to wait for them. Or you might, I don't know. Uh, but just to, for simplicity, let's go ahead and get rid of, let's go ahead and get rid of them from the game. So we'll say game players, get player from character. Yeah, we got the char. I needed that for my session data for the player. Yeah, square bracket. And then is playing will be set to false if they if they die and they respawn. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty. Oh, removing. If a player is removed, we're gonna get the session data for the player. And we're gonna set it to nil. And then we're also gonna get the number of players and decrement it. Number of players minus one. Nice, all right. So that should work. Uh, that's, not too, that's not too mysterious. What else should we do? Now, let's get to our, let's get to our game loop. Let's take a look at that. We have our game loop, we wait. And I'm not gonna query them right away if they wanna play. I'm gonna assume if they join the game and we're ready for a game, then they're gonna be invited to the game. So if is enough players, then intermission. And then we'll play the game. Play game. Oh, there you go, game. This is going to tie up the thread. So we're not gonna do another loop until the game is over. So we'll go to play game. And we'll put prepare players. All right, so what do we do to prepare players? Um, let's also, since we did our is enough players, let's populate that. Let's do this in order. So we're going to check to see if there's enough players. So we'll say if number of players is greater than or equal to players needed, then print, let's do a printout. There are enough players get ready and we'll return true else print waiting for players and we'll return false whoops look at that i have a true i have a return but i need it to be true all righty and we have an intermission intermission is going to be simple it's going to be a for loop so i'll say for I equals, we'll do a 10 second intermission, 10 to one, and we'll decrement by negative one. And then we'll do a print statement, intermission ending I. And then wait a second. Yeah, wait a second. Good, 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 good. What else do we need? Uh, in our prepare players, let's go to our prepare players. And let's spawn them. 
to the game, to the board. So spawns, workspace, game spawns, get children. All right, I'm also going to do a spawn counter. I'm just gonna call it I, initialize it to one. I'll say four, PLY for players and the data associated with it. That's the is playing and wins and stuff. In pairs for session data, do data is playing. We want to set that to true because now they're playing, right? True. Then we'll we'll teleport them. So player character humanoid root part C frame equals uh, C frame new spawns I. Those are square brackets with an I in the middle. Don't put a one in there. And then position. Now, if you want to be facing the board, the second argument right here will be where the board is. But I'm not going to do that because some of you guys don't have a board right now. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Hopefully you can still see. And then I'm going to do plus vector three, new, zero, five, and zero. Because I want them to be slightly above the part so they don't spawn inside it. Then I'm going to increment my counter. So I equals I plus one. If you have not enough spawns for players, you're going to get an array index out of bounds exception right here. So you have to be careful of that. I'm not going to do that check in this video. All right. Yeah, what else do we need? Let's go. Let's take a look for our check for winner. So for now, let's just check to see if there's one person left, right? So maybe Monopoly boot out the people who lose all their money and you got one person left or people rage quit and one person is still, still standing. So for the players and the data associated in pairs, session data, do, and we'll print right now. I'm not gonna do any GUIs yet. Player equals Play, uh, P-L-Y, right? Name won the game. There we go. And then we want to set the is playing to false because they won, they're no longer playing, but they are a winner. So we'll say wins. We'll increment that by data wins plus one sweet all right now we also have to check to see if anybody else is playing because maybe everybody quit before a winner was declared hmm so this is gonna be the same uh, it's gonna be similar I'm gonna do a for loop for PLY for player the data associated in pairs session data do if data is playing then return true. So even if one person's playing, the, uh, we're going to return true. If we get to the bottom, and we haven't returned true, then obviously it's going to be false. Yeah. All right. So what we got down here, let's do gameplay now. So in gameplay, play game, I mean, we'll do a local still playing will equal true prepare the players while still playing do for PLY and data. You've seen this a lot now in pairs session data do because this we want to make sure everybody gets a turn, right? So we're going to, we're going to loop through everybody, but we're going to make sure they are playing. We're going to say is playing. We don't want people on the sidelines. Uh, rolling dice or anything then print uh, whose turn it is so I'm gonna say player and I'll do PLY name it's his turn to roll it's uh, go ahead and roll go ahead and roll and we'll do other stuff here we're gonna put a whole function in here for the gameplay, we have to move the pieces, we have to subtract money, we have to figure out if we landed on somebody's park place or whatever. Um, 
Here we'll check for the winner. We already did that. So maybe somebody won because we've moved and we took everybody's money. And maybe that maybe the winner got mad and quit. Who knows? So we're gonna check for the winner. We're gonna check for the winner, and then we're gonna check if anyone's playing. Check if anyone is playing. At the end of that, we're gonna do a wait. Although we will tie up that thread during the roll in a real in a real game. We just don't have anything there. So I'm putting a wait statement so you can see it. And then on the bottom of the while, we'll just give it a second. And I think that's all we need for our our board game basic skeleton, right? So you can see where you need to put stuff here. But what I want to make sure is if everybody gets a chance to roll. So I can't test that because I need more than one player. Let's say three, all right? I'm gonna save this off. I'm gonna publish as dice two because I don't wanna overwrite the, the game that I'm giving to you, dice. All right? Oh yeah, there we go, so successfully published. Now I'm gonna to go to my test server, make sure there's three players, I'm gonna hit the start. I'm gonna pause the video because it's gonna take a little bit of time to start up. All right, I'm unpausing the video because now everything's starting to go. I'm gonna move some of these out of the way so we can see the one that's actually printing stuff. Uh, unfortunately, this takes a long time. Chances are we're already gonna be teleported in, in, in intermission. So let me move this out of the way. Can I do that? Yeah, let me move that out of the way. And then I'll move this one out of the way. I'll move this guy out of the way. Ah, there we go, we teleported. So this is our game server down here and now we're rolling. We're saying player two, player three, player one, player two, player three, player one. So we're maintaining the order. Remember the names of these players are player one, player two, and player three. So these will be your regular names right here if you have a, a bunch of people playing. Let's go ahead and kill off some of these. I'm going to shut down player one. And now it should just be two and three playing. It is two, three, two, three. Good. Now I'm going to shut down two and three should win. Three won. And now we're going to start another intermission because he's no longer in the game. Oh, we can't because I got rid of them. So there's only one player left. We would have to wait for other people to get into the game. But there you go. There is a basic game loop and I'm going to build on that.